I absolutely love a half marathon, but what I don't love is f***ing it up. Today we're going to go through the best ways to avoid doing that and make it a fun experience where you can look great in the photos rather than like you're holding back tears. And if you're new here, then hey, my name is James and I'm a registered sports nutritionist. I work with amateur and professional endurance athletes and help them to train and race better, improve their recovery and do all of this while staying healthy and happy. Now I work with a lot of runners, whether that's just pure runners or triathletes. And there's a common mistake when it comes to running that I see time and time again. They come to me asking for advice, and it's often because they've suffered with nasty gastrointestinal symptoms during their running race. Now it's fair to say that there might be multiple reasons for this, but a common problem is that they've got their breakfast wrong. If you get your breakfast wrong, then it has the potential to completely ruin your race. So it's something that you want to avoid. The two most common problems when it comes to breakfast are eating the wrong foods and eating too much. Both of these things will increase the risk of gastrointestinal upset. And that's why this one is such a biggie. You don't wanna to have to stop because your tummy is hurting or like you feel that you're gonna yourself and there's no porter loose around. There are three things that make up an ideal breakfast. Firstly, it's focusing on carbohydrates and reducing the amount of fat, fiber, and protein. Dietary carbohydrates are usually easily absorbed and well tolerated, and as we're gonna talk about later, they are a key component to running a good half marathon. For breakfast, simpler is better, so we're focusing on white varieties of things like bread and pasta or rice, rather than brown or wholemeal options. Fat, fiber, and protein are all harder and slower to digest, so if you have lots of those for breakfast, it's more likely that they'll stay sitting around in your gastrointestinal tract and contribute to tummy upset during your run. It doesn't mean that you can't have any of them, it just means be careful about how much you have and make sure that you practice your race breakfast in training well in advance of your race. The second core component of your breakfast is that you should be having it at least two hours before your race, up to about four hours before. This will give you sufficient time to properly digest it and then absorb the nutrients, meaning there's not really gonna be anything left in your tummy and it's going to maximize your body's own carbohydrate stores. If you have a particularly sensitive stomach, then you probably need to err on the side of caution and go closer to the four hours. And if you have an iron stomach, then you might be fine with two. The third component is that you should feel satisfied but not over full. The purpose of your breakfast is not to give you all of the energy to run your half marathon. It's just to top things up and make you feel good. These are all great options for a half marathon breakfast, but if you've got any other ideas or you want to share yours, then please let me know in the comments. Now, if you look online for half marathon advice, you'll commonly see people saying that you need to make sure that you drink plenty of water whilst you're running. This isn't actually true and is the second big mistake that people make when running a half marathon. Almost regardless of how long it's going to take you, for this distance, you really only need to drink to thirst and you don't need to have a specific drinking plan. In relative terms, this is a short event and it is something that your body should be able to deal with, especially if you go into it in a well hydrated state. The night before your race, I'd suggest having 500 milliliters of water with an electrolyte tablet that contains at least 250 milligrams of sodium and then also have the same with your breakfast. This should pretty much optimize your hydration and mean that you go into your half marathon in a really well hydrated state. The final thing to say about this is that actually if you just glug loads of water on its own without any electrolytes in it and specifically sodium, you can actually drop your sodium levels and cause something called hyponatremia. So really all you need to do when it comes to drinking for a half marathon is drink to thirst or drink if you want to just wash your mouth out after you've had something like a gel which we're gonna talk about later. Now we all love Tom Cruise and the absolute idol that he is, but his advice to half marathon runners is pretty awful. I feel the need, the need for speed. That was about half marathons, right? I know full well how fun it is to start a half marathon and you've got crowds around you, you might have spectators, there might be music and you feel awesome and excited and you're just buzzing. Before you know it, you look down at your watch and realize you have gone out 
way too hard. And this is actually a huge mistake. When you go out way harder than you can actually sustain, there are two main things that happen. The first is that you're likely to create lots of lactate because you're working harder than your body can happily tolerate. When you create lots of lactate, you also create lots of hydrogen ions or protons. And this is the reason why your muscles start to become heavy and you might feel really tired and things feel really unpleasant when you're working really hard. That is obviously not conducive to running a good half marathon because you're gonna feel absolutely rubbish before you get anywhere close to the end. The other thing with starting a half marathon too hard is that you'll burn through your carbohydrate stores at a much quicker rate. This will mean you'll probably run out of carbohydrate stores before you get to the end of the race, meaning that you'll slow down considerably and I can promise it will feel like a miserable finish. So the best way to stop this happening, in my opinion, is to do something called negative splitting. Negative splitting is when you run the first half of your race slower than the second, or to put it another way, the second half of your race is faster than the first. This not only feels absolutely awesome as you're just getting quicker throughout the race, but it stops you from going off too hard. So for example, if your pace target is four minutes 30 per kilometer, you might aim for the first half of your race to be around 435 per kilometer and the second half to be around 425. Then when you start, use your watch and purposely go at that slower pace and I can promise you, it will help later on. Now I'd just like to take a moment to say thank you to my paying members for supporting this channel. I really appreciate it and it genuinely means a heck of a lot to me, so thank you. If you'd like to become a member as well, then you can go to my channel page, click on memberships and join up. And if you do, I really appreciate you too. Now there's one thing which people often neglect or get completely wrong, but it has the potential to significantly improve their half marathon time. If you look at research, you'll see that people have these misconceptions that it doesn't actually do anything but they are totally wrong. Carbohydrate loading is a strategy used to maximize your body's own store of carbohydrates, which we call glycogen. And it's been shown to improve performance in endurance events by about two to 3%. Now this is actually pretty massive and there are two main benefits. Firstly is that you'll just run it in a quicker time and I think we all want that. And secondly is that it's gonna make the second half of your race so much more enjoyable than it could be. By carbohydrate loading properly, you reduce the risk of bonking or hitting the wall. And that's where your carbohydrate stores get to such a low level that your body recognizes it and it starts to put the brakes on as a safety mechanism. And you end up having to slow down and you can't keep the same pace. And along with that, it generally feels pretty awful. And if you've raced one before and have done this, you'll know what I mean. Now my suggestion for carb loading is to start about 36 hours before the beginning of your race. This should give you ample time to eat enough carbohydrates and time for your body to absorb it all and maximize those glycogen stores. Now there are some nuances and best practices to carb loading and I've created a free carb loading guide for you. And you can download that and I've put a link in the description and the comment section of this video. Another common mistake I see with people who are running a half marathon is that they're not fueling sufficiently during the race itself. So we've talked about the importance of breakfast and we've talked about the importance of carb loading, but you also need to focus on your nutrition during it too. You've only got enough energy stored for about 90 minutes of hard, steady exercise. And that's assuming that you've got things right like carb loading, you've had a proper breakfast and you haven't gone out too hard. If you get any of those wrong, then it's probably gonna be a lot less than 90 minutes. The most important thing to focus on during a half marathon is carbohydrates because that's the only dietary nutrient which is going to contribute to performance in the short term. So during something like a half marathon. I like runners to consume at least 50 grams of carbohydrates during something like a half marathon. So you can use that number and just scale it according to your time. If you're aiming for 90 minutes, then that would be somewhere around 75 grams of carbohydrates. And if you're aiming for two hours, that might be more like 100 grams of carbohydrates over the race. Gels are usually my preference because they're usually very well tolerated and they are easy to carry. But if you really don't want to use those, then you might go for something like a sports specific chew bar or block 
or you might go for a drink containing carbohydrates instead. I tend to suggest staying away from solid food because it's usually much harder to consume while running and it's also going to increase the risk of GI upset. So I mentioned how important carbohydrate loading was and I've done a full video which I've put up on the screen for you now where I go over this in way more detail. 